what up everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian report i'm your host pablo and joining me as always is mr brian schultz the trailer for wakanda forever the second trailer this is the second or the final i'm gonna say it's the final there might be a tv spot or something small yeah 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 like, this is probably the main this will be the main trailer so brian as soon as you sent it to me i looked at it and I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't disappointed in seeing some of the things that I saw in there. Hopefully we get to see a little bit more, such as what? Namor flying. Um, it would have been, I mean, it's still gonna be cool when we see it for the first time and how they show that. But Brian, this trailer uh, to me was uh, even better than the first. Um, it certainly gets me hyped for the movie. I bought my tickets. I'm ready to go. Um, did, you, did you buy your tickets? I haven't bought them yet, but I don't have okay. the same. I don't have the same Issues. crowds out here that you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, Brian, before we get into the trailer, um, I wanted to talk about the situation with um, Ryan Coogler and Kevin Feige, the MCU, not wanting to recast T'Challa. I thought about this, and then I read uh, an article that you sent um, where Ryan Coogler is quoted saying um, some things about Chadwick, or not even not even him. I guess for the situation. Brian, having, the way I was thinking about it is, it's always a blessing to have good people around you, especially, you know, if you work with them or whatever, like if they're good people, you like working with these people and people around Chadwick loved him. They didn't know what was going on with him. And, I, and I'm quite certain that Ryan Coogler spent a lot of time with him because, you know, he was a director and needed to get a certain performance out of him. So they hung out a lot. I understand the reason for not recasting because you don't come across people like that. I never met Chadwick, but the way people um, have mourned him, have spoken of him, um, shows me that he was really well loved. He was loved by, by many. And to lose that person certainly is a, a, an experience that you feel um, that another person can only imagine. But that's what separates you from me or whatever, is who had the experience. That experience is going to sort of uh, drive you to make towards, to make certain decisions. So I understand the decision not to recast. Um, if you've been watching this uh, channel for quite some time, um, even when I was on Eggheads Entertainment with Tracy, we spoke about why not recast. We felt like the, the character of Black Panther needed to continue. And I think Ryan Coogler, based on the things that we've heard about the movie, Brian, and the rumors that we've uh, heard, he left it in a place where we can continue that legacy. Just for not, it's just not for the T'Challa character. That's how they're honoring uh, uh, Chadwick. And I'm certainly cool with it. Um, but Brian, what did you think of the, the trailer, man? And are you hype? We definitely get into a billion. You oh. sent me a, you sent me a text saying that they showed too much. Tell me what you saw that you you, you said uh, you you think you could have waited to see in the theater. Uh yeah. So you got a lot of stuff in there. So the trailer itself, yeah. I mean, you know me. I'm always a, you can show me less. And I thought that I actually liked the first one a little better because it did show you less. It was more of a feel and a vibe and an emotional chord versus giving away all the 
the action and the set pieces. Mm -hmm. This one went a little heavier on the set pieces than I thought they needed to, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, like, I honestly thought that he could have kept Namor's wings in the bag entirely. If yeah, he wanted yeah, yeah, yeah. To. Uh, he does talk about that. He gives an interview to EW, uh, to Entertainment Weekly, which I'll, I'll, I got some quotes here for you in a second. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, I, I said to you, and it's funny, he does talk about this. I think this movie looks great. And I, I've noticed this it's from dope. the beginning when we started seeing footage. I was like, there's something about it. And come to find out, he shot it differently. He changed the cameras. <laughs> So yes. This movie. And I was yes. like, okay, now I'm not crazy. I'm like, this is part of why this movie looks so incredible. Is he yeah. actually literally changed how it looked from the first one? And he said he did it deliberately because everyone is effectively mourning throughout this production. So he wanted the what they call the um, anamorphic lens, which is a little blurrier. Um, and he wanted it got a different aspect ratio. I'm not a film junkie on this yeah. stuff. But basically. He did it to make it look like there was almost a little bit of a fog. He just hits the word he used over everything you're seeing because everyone's emotionally dealing with what's going on. And I'm like, that's why that guy is <laughs> on the short list because yeah, yeah. great directors think creatively about how to present something to you, not just the story, but how, what you're seeing. Um, yeah. And I think Chris Nolan always said something about that when people used to complain about his audio and he would say, it's not about the words that are being spoken. It's about the feeling of the movie I'm trying to create, the experience I want you to be put through. And yeah. that's how I think of this. It's like, he's trying to give you a visual experience that touches on how everyone on the set felt as they were creating this. And that's a really cool, that's a really cool touch. So I love the visual. I mean, the colors look great. I like the mix of modern action. Like there's like set pieces in the streets, in the cities. And then there's clearly like, hey, we're fighting on the beach. There's a little bit more. There's a sense of heritage and a sense of culture between the Atlanteans and um, and the Wakandans. I love that contrast. Um, and then, listen, I mean, the other thing I got to say, I texted it to you, but I mean, I don't know. Based on the trailers, I think Angela Bassett, Academy Award consideration, because... Oh. She looks like she's in the middle of this film and she's got scenes with Namor. She's got scenes with the, the government. She's got scenes with her, with the remains of her family and every scene she's got, I'm like, she is throwing like 300 miles it. an hour. She's going to kill it. She's going to kill it. And I, and, 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 and I got that feeling what you're saying, Brian, I got that in that first trailer. Oh, that, that, that the, the only lines of that trailer are hers and they're amazing. This is going to be amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait, Brian. Because we've been in the bottom for quite a long time with regards to our excitement towards the MCU. Not to say that we haven't enjoyed what we've been given, they just haven't been as great as the first few phases, the first three phases. We've been, we've been more let down than yeah. lifted up recently. Yeah. And this one, my friends, if this movie doesn't lift you up, we'll see when the critics come out. I mean, I don't, regardless, I don't expect to see 30, 40, 50%. No, um, I think 85 is the downside. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I'm expecting, I, I think it's going to be above. I mean, uh, yeah, me too, me too. Given all that, Brian, uh, this will be yet another uh, stellar outing for Ryan Cougar. And ho hopefully this gives him enough uh, of an incentive to perhaps uh, take on the Secret Wars role that, as directors, but this, this, let me read, yeah. Let me read you a Go quote, because this is a mm -hmm. great quote. Uh, he said it to Entertainment Weekly about the film, because, so one thing that he confirmed was he had written the entire sequel before Chadwick passed. So there's a version of this story that had T'Challa in it. And then the tragedy happens. So then he says, quote, I had to find a way that I felt like I could keep going 
and a way that our Black Panther family could keep going. I started to come up with a film that had elements of the film we had just finished writing, but also applied the themes that the people who were hurting just as me could actually perform and execute and come out on the other side whole. Man, that's exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. Because that is the experience of this film right there. Like he's telling you as an audience goer, he is trying to make, his efforts will be to make you feel that for two hours and change, or two hours and 40 minutes we hear. Yeah. What we hear. So I, that, that makes me very excited because that's the right place from which this movie can be great. And I think it also, you, you talk about the recasting thing. This quote tells you that the decision not to recast had 100% approval from the only people that really mattered, which is the people that were going to make this movie. Yeah. They weren't ready. And I think Kevin Feige changed the language to basically confirm, quasi-confirm something you, you and I talked about way back when, when they first started saying they weren't going to recast. Mm -hmm. He said it was too soon. Yeah, yeah. That is not never. He's saying it's, and too soon means for the people making this film, they were not ready to embrace a new T'Challa. That's what that's really saying, which means someday, whether it's through his son, whether it's through the, the, the astral plane, whatever, I think T'Challa is coming back to the MCU in some form, but it's as we predicted, it'll be years down the road when there will be universal approval mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. have a new actor play that role. Yeah. And that goes back to a lot of the things that I was saying in, in the beginning about that experience of being around a person then losing them. And then how do you move on? How do you keep moving on, especially, you know, given the, such a tragic loss? And I'm telling you, this is how I think it's going to go, Brian. He's going to have his kid. His, we won't see Black Panther again till after Fantastic Four. A little bit older. Uh, and he'll be involved in much more. Um, but this will be the end of, like you said, Ryan Coogler uh, directing a trilogy. This will be his last one. I think he's telling that to you here when he says everyone's going to come out whole. That includes himself. And if yeah, he's yeah. whole after the second one, then he That's doesn't it. have an emotional need to direct the third one. He might yeah. help write it. As I said, he'll produce it, but he's not going to direct it. No. What did yeah, you think is... of Namor? So this is getting a reaction. This is not comics inaccurate. What did you think of Namor with, with the wings? I, I have to admit, I didn't... My least favorite shot of the trailer is Namor's flying, jumping scene. I think the CGI <laughs> looks a little weak in that scene. It's still my, like... There's something about the flying physics that are off with that. He looked fine when he was kind of, like, floating. Descending? Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was fine. When he was jumping around, I was like... Yeah, that didn't look that was my probably my least favorite action shot if i came to you dude i want to do this movie and this dude got feathers on his wing on on his on his on his on his, on his ankles how do you make that movie dope I, it's hard it's a hard sell it's a hard sell i always wonder about how they're gonna make this look dope uh hopefully so they Kugler explain has a quote on this okay so Kugler, he talks about this so he he said, I think it's a great quote. He said, I think with making these types of movies, you got to lean into the weird stuff or you risk missing what makes it fun. Namor has got really unique features and things that don't necessarily go together. True. He can breathe underwater, obviously, but he's got these little wings on his ankles. He's got pointy ears and walks around in his underwear. It's all fun, man. I think that he's got the right perspective, which is you can't, you take it seriously, but you got to be self-aware that like, yeah, I get it. This is kind of inherently silly, but it's the way it was drawn, so I'm going to work with it. Brian, is this equivalent to uh, Yaya uh, Clown no. Works? <laughs> I'm just no, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think of it that way though, because like I think y Yaya's statement to me was more along the lines of I'm mailing in the performance a little bit because it it's just not that serious of a project. Yeah, who clearly takes this project very seriously. But he's pointing out that like you can't lose yourself in that to a point where you don't have fun and we have seen superhero movies that are some of zack snyder's work for example 
where the, the seriousness overwhelms the fun. And that's not great content necessarily either. And I yeah, think yeah. that's what Cougar's getting at is like, you do have to remember this is a super villain slash anti-hero and you have to kind of entertain with that yeah, as yeah, much yeah. as you're trying to deliver. But I think he's not saying what Yaya is saying in the sense of within the performances, like don't tell me Angela Bassett views her part as clown work. <laughs> <laughs> okay right yeah yeah, like, yeah 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 she doesn't like obviously no, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i mean this will i think submariner is gonna be i mean i'm still not sold on him yet brian it looks all right it looks okay i'm still not sold on the character the look is whatever right but i'm still not sold on the character yet oh yeah 10x gotta do it that's that's yeah, his yeah. job and, and, heard he, his and voice. he's good i heard yeah. his voice in here so for the first time, but yeah, no, he's got to sell you on. They confirmed he is a mutant, so they're not deviating from that. I don't know how much they're gonna use it, but yeah, he is. It'll, it'll be interesting to uh, hear how he comes about, how he's so different from the rest. Um, so there's gonna uh, there's gonna be a lot of little things here, Brian, um, that are gonna be very interesting. Um, but I can't wait for this movie. This is gonna be. Uh, on the I, I feel Brian like on the level of or close to the level of uh, No Way Home to me I think it's this. going north of 1.5 okay so the, and the reason I think that is this film was not as big overseas it was basically a 50-50 split, U.S. versus non-U.S. the first time when it did 1-3. So this is mm -hmm. not a film that was actually that heavily reliant on China to go to begin with. Mm -hmm. But the track record of movies where a beloved star passes, and this is kind of like, not really their last performance, but it is sort of the send-off. Dark Knight clearly got a big box office bounce. It was a great film, but Heath Ledger's death contributed to the box office. Paul Walker is the reason why Furious 7 is far and away the highest grossing Fast and Furious movie. I actually don't think it's the best, but yeah. because of his death, that added to people's desire to go out to the movie. Um, I think that is going to be built into the box office of this movie. I think I think it's coming out with an enormous, like, I think it's coming out with an Avengers, you mentioned No Way Home, an Avengers No Way Home level opening weekend. I think an opening weekend domestic north of 250. Like that, wow. I think it's coming out like that. Wow. That gets you into that like one five territory where they, you, and if the movie's as good as I think it can be, then it's a lock. But like, even if it's just good, like in the eyes of the critics, like good and epic, I think, the, yeah. I think the numbers are going to be huge. And it's got a all due respect to Black Adam. I think <laughs> it's got a clear run from its release date until Avatar's, which is a, over a month later. I think you got five weeks uncontested, basically, where this movie's just going to dominate box office. Yeah. Black Panther, ladies and gentlemen. Wakanda Forever. This is... Uh... They kept this movie very secretive towards the beginning. And, 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 and as we come up on the date, um, we've been getting a lot more information, a lot of rumors. Um, hopefully those rumors are true, Brian, because those rumors about how they do this movie and end this movie uh, with, with these certain uh, scenarios occurring uh, leads to an exciting future for the character, for that right, for that that world of Wakanda. Um, we also know that there was there's a Wakanda series. I don't know if, if it's still happening. Is, was there a Wakanda series happening for there's Disney Plus? Of, there's talk of Kugler working on a Wakanda Disney Plus series that hasn't been confirmed. He obviously is helping shepherd the Ironheart series. We got a first look at Riri Williams in the armor or the, the prototype. What do you think? Fly, flying around a little bit. Look, but it didn't, you couldn't get like, I'm sure someone's going to have trailer cap breakdowns. It, my first thought was it almost looked like a mini Hulkbuster. That was like my first visual clue, but like, I didn't get a clear look at it other than, you know, kind of the upward flight, which looked, which looked fine, you know, so I, you know, but um, I'm excited to see it. I mean, the, the, the toys have started to spoil, I guess, the, 
we might get two versions of the suit, like one that's incomplete that she builds, and maybe then Shuri kind of helps her get the first sort of completed suit together. I don't know, but or vice versa. True, also true. So I also think again, I didn't feel like they needed to show you the whole Black Panther suit at the end of this. I, I was cool with what they did in the first one. Yeah. And I, I was like, ah, you didn't have to show me the whole thing. Yeah, you didn't have you to know? do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't have to do that, but Looks I fun, guess. But I was just like, you don't need it. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Um, they get that that shot though. Brian gives me hope for uh, Batman being able to jump from tall places and land on his feet. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Wakanda Forever. Uh, the the I guess the the final trailer. Like Brian said, we'll probably get some TV spots. Um, a few a few weeks before the movie comes out, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this movie. Are you excited as much as we are for this film? Uh, let let me know your thoughts in the in the comment section below. Um, November eleventh, that is the date. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do for that show, Brian. It's listen if you, if you're happy with the twenty minute shows that you've gotten, good luck for the Black Panther video because that's gonna be a good hour i might even have a special guest i'm gonna try to get a special guest because we need to talk about it um but that's our show for today brian uh any last words no super excited for this i think they've promoted i mean like i said i'm nitpicking how much they showed in the trailers but the promotion's been great everything cougar's saying is spot on can't wait to see it yeah we'll see you next time on another report